Hey everybody, Adam here for pixelatedphotographer.com. I got another Lightroom video for you. This time we're going to import some pictures. Uh, specifically, we're going to import them from the memory card. There's a couple different ways to go about importing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on some of them, but uh, the big thing here, we're going to demonstrate how to import some pictures from the memory card. So the first thing we have to do is get some pictures. I got my camera here. I got my uh, trusty little Lego guy. I'm going to take a couple pictures. There we go. So now I got uh, a series of pictures, maybe five, six, eight pictures on there. And I'm going to import them into Lightroom. So I've already started Lightroom. I haven't done anything as far as folders go, things like that. You can do all of this through Lightroom. Or if you want, you can do some of it through Windows or, or if you're on a Mac on the Mac, create your folders, things like that. That One of the things I like about uh, Lightroom is it doesn't force you to do it their way or, or no way. You can kind of mix and match whatever you want to do. So if you already have a system for organization, which is something that, that you really should, um, and, and you're more comfortable using that than you are using the, the Lightroom portion of it, then that's okay. You can keep doing that, but we're going to do it uh, this way. Stick my memory card in. Now you can have, there's an option in the preferences of Lightroom that will detect when you insert a memory card and automatically open Lightroom and open the import dialog box. This is something I don't necessarily like. If you, if you had a computer that was dedicated just to uh, doing photos and stuff like that, maybe it would work a little better. But I stick a lot of memory cards in my computer and I don't necessarily need uh, Lightroom opening up each time. But if that is something you wanted to see, it would be under uh, Edit, Preferences, the general tab here and right there is one that says show import dialog when memory card is detected so if that's something you want to do you can do it that way I don't like it that way but here we go I put the memory card in I'm gonna click this button down here that says import and when I do it's gonna open up the import dialog box and this is a, a, a fantastic feature of Lightroom the the amount of options that you can do just when importing is is amazing so the first thing we notice there's all my pictures I just took there's my little Lego guy he's trying to get a picture of uh, of my uh, Xbox remote there this side of the of the uh, import dialog box is the from side we have the pictures and then we have the two side over here so on the from side it automatically shows my uh, memory card EOS digital is the name that uh, the, the memory card gets from from being formatted in the camera if you wanted to you can also import from various drives so here's my uh, my regular C drive um, this is a uh, disk drive here is a uh, my memory card which is actually the one that is selected there and then of course this is another hard drive I have a Z drive that I labeled it so you can import from various places uh, we're going to have right there from the memory card, that's what I want to choose. I have uh, eject after import selected. What that does is as soon as the pictures are done importing, it will uh, eject or unmount the, the memory card. And typically this isn't a problem. Most memory cards or card readers and all that are, are, are plug and play devices. So you can just pop the card in and out without having to, to right click down on the taskbar and say, you know, eject or remove this safely remove this hardware type thing but if your computer required that it's a good checkbox to have and, and I just leave it on so it does it on its own. The middle here we have the pictures these are the pictures I just took uh, one kind of nice thing about it you can look in the normal grid view you have control over the size of the thumbnails so you can make them a little bit bigger if you wanted to see what they look like that way if you if you wanted to see even more you could select one and you can switch to loop view which will give you a big full screen uh, view of it and obviously that's not a very good picture um, <laughs> in fact I think that was taken at uh, ISO 6400 which is which is a little high for that camera but a um, couple different ways you can look on it you can obviously do check boxes check all uncheck all however you wanted to do it on the top here we see that we're gonna copy there is an option I can select to copy it as a DNG. Uh, we just had an article on the site the other day talked about what a DNG file is. This is where you would select that you want to copy your files in and have them automatically converted to DNG. The other two here say move and add. Uh, those two options are for when you're not coming from a memory card. If I was going to move some pictures from one folder to another, just add some pictures that were already on my hard drive, these options would then be available but for a memory card you're not going to move you're not going to add you're going to copy so that's the one that's highlighted on this side here is the two side of the uh, of the import 
dialog box. Uh, right now it's selected. I This is the settings I generally use. This is a hard drive that I have in my computer that is dedicated just for pictures. So that's all selected. There's a couple, let me close these here so we don't get confused. There's a couple different options. And this is, again, one of the things I really like about Lightroom. Very top one here, uh, file handling. You get to choose what the previews are going to look like so you don't spend a lot of time rendering previews. If you're not necessarily even going to look at them, you're just going to import all your images. Um, there's some options to uh, not uh, import selected duplicates. And this is more for when you're moving or copying files from one folder to another that are, is already in Lightroom. You obviously, if you accidentally were to copy a folder that had some images that you already had in Lightroom or, or something like that, you wouldn't want to have duplicates of a lot of stuff. So it you can have the option for it to figure out if they're duplicates. I leave that off. I don't, uh, I don't move a lot of images around that way, so I don't have to worry about it. Another cool little feature, you can check this box and you can have it copy a second copy somewhere. So if you did have, say, a a second or a third hard drive that you're using a, as a backup, you could have it copy to two different destinations at the same time. Maybe one is a working hard drive and one is just strictly a backup hard drive, something to that effect. Um, anyway, nice feature to have. Another one here, file renaming. Now, I, I have this checked and I use this feature because I ran into a problem real early on. <laughs> Canon cameras, and I've had all Canon cameras. I'm on my third or fourth, I forget, uh, digital Canon body. They all name things the same way. It all has the same naming uh, structure to it. So it's, you know, it, the only time it changes is if you're using a different color space. Uh, it also only names up to four digits long. So the highest number you can have is 9,999. 9 After that, it resets, goes back to one. Well, you can imagine I have more than one image with the same name if if I don't do anything to to rename them. So automatically on um, import I have it renaming the files and there's a few templates the one I use is the date and then the file name so it uses the normal file name that the camera generates which you can see right down here is IMG underscore and then the number 5353 in this case when we're done that's gonna have a, a date in front of it and it's gonna do it in the format of, of month day year in four digits and then IMG and then the number same as it is here uh, you can have it change the extension if you want, uppercase, lowercase. It's important for some operating systems, not so much uh, for Windows. Um, and, and so I don't use that at all. <clears throat> Here's the example. It shows exactly what that's going to look like when we're done. In, oh, I had it backwards. I'm sorry. It's the year, then the month, and the date. So 2011, um, 01, and 19, dash, and then the normal file name. I have it renamed that, so I'm never going to have images that have the same name. The next one, apply during import, you can actually have it apply one of these preset, uh, develop uh, presets, they're called. <laughs> um, not something I want to do, but if you if you did want all of them to be black and white or a certain preset that you created, you could have that applied right on import and, and ease up on your editing further down the road. Metadata is a little more uh, involved. I'm going to skip that from now, but there is a preset for metadata. And then you can also keyword. So if you want to do it on import, if all your images are the same, which a lot of times I'll take a, a series of images of my son, and I'll keyword him uh, with his name so that that's done and taken care of. Then the very last one here is the destination. Obviously, this is the most uh, important. On here, you see you have all your different drives. Sorry, getting some email. You have all your different drives here. Uh, you can select, if you already had a folder created, you could go into the drive, into the folder, drill down to wherever you wanted. Um, for example, I can go all the way to the bottom here and say, oh, I want to put it in this folder. And I click on it, and that's where they're going to go. Another option you can do is you can say, I want to go to this folder, but I want you to create a subfolder. So you can, I can check this box. I can give that a name, and I'll name it uh, PP Lightroom. And and now when I do this, it's going to create a folder. You can see it uh, kind of grayed out right here. It's showing me what it's going to do. It's going to create a subfolder in the folder that I selected and put these files in there. The other thing you can have it do is sort by date. Now this can be a little, this can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. It's a good thing, in my opinion anyway, if all the pictures were taken on the same date. 
what that's going to do is then inside that folder that we just created, so it's going to be this folder into the subfolder we told it to create, and then in there it's going to create multiple subfolders for each date of the metadata that comes from the pictures. So if I took pictures on Monday, I took pictures on Tuesday, I took some more today on Wednesday, and I imported them, I'm going to end up with a subfolder here that I named, and three date subfolders below that with the pictures from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sorted out in there. To me, that's a little overkill. I don't necessarily need that, so I'd leave that off. Once we're done, we have everything set up. Uh, a cool thing you can do here is you can actually save this as, a, a, as an import preset, meaning all the settings we have now, if these are the ones we're going to use on a regular basis, we can go ahead, leave them like that, save them. Next time, uh, next time we come in, we just select our preset and we're done. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, once you get it, then you're just going to hit the import button. We go back, you can see we're back in the library module now. And up here in the top is our little progress bar going to show us where uh, where we are in our import process. Once these images start showing up, uh, you can start working on them. You don't have to wait for them all to load. You can start doing whatever you want with them. Uh, you can rate them, you can put stars on them, different things. You can even take them into the develop module and, and use them there. So now our progress bar is gone, our images are gone, uh, have been uh, copied over. On this side, and this is uh, a topic for another video, but this kind of shows our folder structure. We can drill down and find, it'll automatically show the, uh, the last previous import. I can select that. I can also go in and pick the different folders of, uh, of where, uh, where they're stored. So here's the one we made, PP Lightroom. I click on that, you can see the pictures stay the same. If I were to click on a different one, there's some different pictures. Go back. And uh, there we go. If we just kind of quickly check, oh, we didn't give it a keyword, so that wouldn't work. I was going to say, if you, if you gave it a keyword, you could look over here, you would see that that keyword had been applied. But we're done. We imported our photos. Now we can start working on them, cataloging them, sorting them, deleting the ones that are uh, terrible, which would include all of these. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll do that another time. Uh, again, uh, let us know what you think of the videos on the site or in the forums, pixelatedphotographer.com, and we'll see you next time.